I've spent six weeks now testing out the cold plunge, trying out both morning and night routines, working my way from 50 all the way down to 39 degrees, all the while tracking various metrics in my recovery to give you this review. And of course, at the end, giving it a rating of either a must buy, buy, try, wait for a discount, or never ever touch. Now this is Colin Jenkins with Connect The Watch, where we cover connected fitness news, reviews, and more. So make sure to subscribe if you want more content just like this. Now, cold water therapy has been having a huge growth in popularity over the past few years, and for good reason. It seems like we are finding out more and more every day about all of the benefits, both short and long term, of cold therapy. And it's hard to ignore when you have experts like Dr. Kelly Starrett and Dr. Andrew Huberman and Dr. Rhonda Patrick and people like Tim Ferriss and Tony Robbins and Rich Rolls and Wim Hof and many of the world's fittest athletes like Rich Froning and Noah Olson and Justin Morderos. Now the benefits of cold plunging or ice baths include an increase in recovery, improved immune function, better sleep, lower stress and cortisol levels, improved heart rate variability, or HRV, increased fat loss, higher metabolism, and the list goes on and on. Now, I'm no stranger to cold therapy. I've been taking ice baths on occasion for the past 12 years, and I've also utilized cryotherapy many times as well. But never have I done so on a regular day-to-day -day basis, and never have I taken ice baths that go below 50 degrees in temperature. The cold plunge, because of the convenience of just having it be the exact temperature that you want it, just waiting for you to jump in, has changed all of that. It's taken away all of the friction of having to go get ice or go to a cryotherapy place and pay 30 or $40 a session. And because of that, this is the first time that I've been really able to successfully build cold therapy into my daily routine. So the cold plunge comes with six different options, which I'll go over in a minute, but all of them feature the following. One, the temperature can be adjusted down to as low as 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Two, the cold plunge is built for both indoor and outdoor use, though you will need to use a GFCI outlet or buy an adapter for one. Three, all provide circular filtration, ozone sanitation, and a micron filter, which alongside the maintenance supplies, keeps the water clean and clear with no harsh chemicals like chlorine or bromine. Four, all come with an underwater light, which makes the cold plunge a lot more appealing for those nighttime plunges, which I can't wait to talk to you about. And five, all of them include an insulated spa cover, which can lock on via clips, an attachable cell phone holder, a hose filter, a skimmer net, and a one-year factory warranty. And the different cold plunge options break down like this. First, you can choose between a cold or hot and cold plunge. The original cold plunge, which is the one that I have, cost $4,990, provides one quarter horsepower of cooling power, and is 67 inches long and 24 inches wide. The hot and cold version cost $500 more, provides an additional kilowatt of heating power, and can turn the plunge into a mini hot tub going up to 103 degrees. Next, either of these versions can be upgraded for $1,000 to its pro version. The pro version having a full horsepower compared to the regular one quarter, which allows for faster and improved cooling. For example, indoors, the original cold plunge can drop the temperature by around two and a half degrees per hour, while the pro can drop it by around eight to 10 degrees per hour. And the Pro is probably best for those who live where it's really hot, so it can more easily stay at your ideal temperature. But it is important to know that the Pro is louder and so is suggested for mostly outdoor use, being 61 decibels versus 53. And finally, for another additional $1,000, you can upgrade the Pro to an XL Pro, which increases the size from 67 inches in length to 73 inches and from 24 inches in width to 27. So in terms of how it's designed, I think the plunge looks fantastic. The white tub with the crystal clear water, especially at night with that light. And this is very important because jumping into icy cold water isn't the most enjoyable thing at first. So it helps it at least looks very nice and inviting. And in terms of setting up and maintaining the cold plunge, it's extremely easy to do. They have a few videos that you can follow along to, but it really doesn't require any sort of expertise to get up and running. And in terms of weekly and monthly maintenance, 
it's very low effort with minimal that actually needs to be done. Especially if you opt for the six month maintenance package, you'll have everything that you need from test strips, which help you tell exactly which solutions you need to add to keep the water perfect. And then mostly you just need to change out the filter once a month, which takes around one minute. The cooler itself is easy and simple. It tells you the current temperature and allows you to set a new temperature just by holding the set button and adjusting from there. There's also a nice looking cover on the side, which hides some of the less attractive parts of the cold plunge. And overall, it was just designed really well. The only part of the design that I don't really like is that there is a small filter on the side of the cooling unit, which if you have this placed all the way against the wall, like I originally did and how I see most people do online, you can't really open it up to clean it very easily. So I ended up moving the tub a little bit farther away from the wall than I really would have liked to make cleaning the filter just a bit easier. Okay, so let's get into my experience using the cold plunge. I just started at 50 degrees and decided that every time that I could be in the tub for more than five minutes without shaking, I would lower the temperature by one degree for the next day. The first time that I jumped in, my body was definitely not used to it and I was shaking a lot and I didn't make it to the five minutes at first. But by the second and third time, I felt a lot more comfortable and was able to stay in the water much longer. And I was able to get my full body into the water. And honestly, I think getting my neck under the water actually helped a bit since your thyroid has a lot to do with your temperature regulation. I think it helps to have your neck be the same temperature as the rest of your body to help you adjust to the cold water. But anyway, Anyways, over the course of a month, I slowly was able to lower the water down to around 42 to 43 degrees, which is where I feel good at for around three to five minutes. Now I have tried taking it down to 39 degrees, but I'm not really quite ready for that yet. And really having a colder temperature doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be getting more benefit, but I do think there is a bit of magic about staying in the water for at least three minutes at that sub 50 degrees. And I tracked my results the entire time using my Whoop and other devices. And the difference that cold plunging made was easily more impactful than anything else I've ever done to see those numbers move. For example, my heart rate variability or HRV, which is a really good metric to assess your overall recovery. Well, mine usually hovers around 60. Now with HRV, the higher the number in general, the better. And after a few days into cold plunging, I already had set a new record HRV score for myself at 72, then a few days later at 74, and then a few days later at 78. And this is all while I was taking cold plunges first thing in the morning, which that is a way to wake up. If you have trouble getting up in the morning, yeah, coffee can help, but jumping into 43 degree water, that really does the trick. And I'm actually 100% serious about that. The energy that you get from adding this into your early morning routine is incredible. So I was mostly taking these cold plunges in the morning, but I do know that some people like to take them at night. Now, I was pretty skeptical about this and I didn't really want to jump in at around 10 p.m. before I went to bed. But I finally did and followed that up with a nice warm shower. And the next morning when I woke up to check my HRV score, and at this point, the highest I'd ever seen it was 78 just the week prior, it jumped all the way into the 90s almost a 20% increase to my highest score ever. So the cold plunge's ability to aid recovery and to improve sleep is like nothing I've ever experienced or used before. Now, a lot of athletes use cold baths and cold therapy immediately after their workouts to recover faster and to be less sore. And I actually don't like the cold plunge for that purpose. I think that if you eliminate that inflammatory process that happens during and after workouts so quickly by immediately jumping into a cold cold bath, yeah, you'll recover faster, probably a lot faster, but you'll also lose a lot of the benefit of the workout as well. So I have used it after workouts occasionally, especially after long runs or times where I really wanted to feel as recovered as possible the next day. But usually I would try to just jump in first thing in the mornings or later at night, many hours after my workouts were done. Now, like I said, I've been using the original cold plunge, which honestly is what I would suggest for most people under six foot too. And yes, this tub may seem a bit short for anybody who is six foot or more, but you can just cross your legs and it works perfectly fine. So no real need to go to that XL Pro version unless you really need to. And now that it's become part of my routine, it's really not as uncomfortable as it once was. And in fact, it's become a really enjoyable process since I know how good I'm going to feel afterwards. After a month now, I like to dip my head in a few times. I like to go down and get my ears in there, which I know sounds strange, but feels really nice 
and it's just an incredibly beneficial habit that seems crazy, but is really one of the best things that I've ever implemented in terms of my fitness and health. And while you don't need something as nice as the cold plunge to be able to do this, having the ability to just jump in daily without worrying about getting ice or any other friction that would cause me to say, eh, maybe another day, that is just so valuable. And yeah, it cost $5,000, which I know is gonna be a tough for a lot of people, but the reality is that this price is about half of other similar products currently out there. And so it's actually a really good deal when it comes to this type of unit. So rating this on a must buy, buy, try, wait for a sale, do not touch ever scale, I would have to say the cold plunge is a must buy for anybody who can afford one. It is my favorite product that I have reviewed this year and it's allowed me to build a new routine and a new habit that is having an immensely positive effect on my overall fitness and health. Cold is absolutely my new medicine and I sincerely hope that it becomes yours too. You can learn more about Cold Plunge in the link I have in the description below. This again is Colin with Connect the Watts. Appreciate you being here and I'll see you next time.